Hello and welcome to this League of Legends Champion Guide. And in it, we will be talking once again about the finest Alpha Kitty playstyle, how to hard carry with Rango Jungle in Season 10. And because we have a lot to get through, including ability rundown, runes, atomization, first clears, game style patterns like ganking and fighting, as well as some animated combos, and all of which will be finished off with a gameplay breakdown that shows you how to hard carry in this season, and yes, yes, finally the Rengar in the gameplay will be Scrub Noob. And so I'm simply going to ask you to please let me know in the comments which champion you would like to see a jungle guide for next. And of course, to please like and subscribe if you are enjoying the Season 10 content. And so without delay, you will now see the Ability Overview page, all with a little bit of motion tracking and motion blur to keep your attention, I hope. And so if you aren't totally familiar with his abilities, you have these short, unfunny descriptions of them, although we will talk about the abilities where they are relevant in the video. It's just to give a rundown and show you the Q is the core ability for damage and is always macked first. It's your auto reset, it gives you attack speed, it's your ADC delay button and if you are going for the full damage one shot build it is common to max that e second because of the scaling slow for utility as well as the scaling damage however it is common practice in the bruiser build and even in the damage build to max that w second because of the 16 to 10 second cooldown factor you have in addition to the damage as well the passive gives you that free AD for each champion takedown, plus the flashy bush jumping that people always underestimate, and honestly many Rengos don't use properly. We all know the ultimate is the assassin button and the chase down button, and we'll look at how to use it properly later on, but just to focus on the extent of the bush jumping, you can see some common locations and bush jumps you should know as Rengo, including ones that are used for first clears, whether you start on red, which you should, or on the blue. Just remember that the lingering time for the bush jump is 0.25 seconds once you leave the bush. This obviously means the more movement speed you have, the further you can go in 0.25 seconds, and so the further your jump will be effectively, even if the range itself doesn't really scale. As such, when you think about Rengo Jungle, what comes to mind is that havoc of mobility around bushes and those bush sleeps that you can use to wards, minions, champions, monsters, and include the very satisfying flash jump Q combo that all Rengo players need to know to finish off targets. This is all the more effective once you know when to use what empowered abilities as well as how to do that team at one shot combo. You'll see some of those in our gameplay example. This includes using one's empowered W in anticipation of CC or to react to it, rather than going for pure Q burst, or just using your empowered E to make sure you get that hard stun for chase downs, which is very fundamental when going for those early game ganks. But there are a lot of advanced Rengar mechanics and things we could talk about, so if you want a champion series on that, maybe we can look into it. But for now, I'll leave the gameplay example at the end of the video to further show you how to use these abilities to their best advantage. And in the meantime, we need to make sure we have the absolute right setup. And yes, that means we need to talk about runes. Now, if you are someone that's paid attention at all to Rengo's build in the last while, this is the page you've been running. Electrocute, Sudden Impact, Eyeball, Relentless, Going Booties, and Futures Market. This gives you that single target maximum burst, plus a little bit of gateway into your build that makes it much faster to get full lethality, into your six items because it's typical not to build the jungle item which we will talk about shortly but the main thing it's just noob friendly and i don't mean that in an insulting way just in a way that when you start playing assassins this is pretty simple it's pretty easy to understand one target will eventually die very quickly and it gives you access to your items faster in the event that you don't exactly snowball as hard as you want because as rengar you want to be ahead as soon as possible hence the nature of scaling on the eyeball collection as well as relentless hunter which as we just discussed helps your bush jumping and so on. However, we are in the great days of adaptation and rune variety and as such the Conqueror rune, as it has with Kha'Zix and many other assassins, has come to Rengar. It is considered an absolute staple in top lane, especially in Korea where they play 80% of the time there rather than jungle, but immediately you have to consider that Electrocute sometimes can just not be enough damage to one-shot someone, especially in the early game, and late game, do you really need it to one-shot people? Look at this nice pentakill with Conqueror, does it look like he's missing a little bit of damage? Not really, but that reliability and that safety and that accessibility of Futures Market can be replaced for a rune that gives you that healing and gives you that stacking AD over time, which is really nice against other champions like Lee Sins and Olafs that do run this, so it can actually help you out early game quite nicely against those fightery, bruisery, tankier targets that you might be seeing in the current jungle meta, but also having it up all the time is something that Rengar will really like in teamfights. If you jump in and get a one shot and get it fully stacked on one target, you very easily can go and switch onto the next target having all that bonus AD and healing accessible to you. In Electrocute's case, you might not actually have that, but it's not just about the healing on the Conqueror that can help you there, it's also the rest of the Precision Tree. And you can also choose to go for Scaling Lifesteal instead of Alacrity. Yes, the attack speed goes very nicely with Rengar's kit, will help you early clears, but because you weren't really running that anyway, it's not like you needed to first clear and get ahead, it just helps a little bit. However, that Bloodline really does work nicely with the Q because Lifesteal on his Q is actually a thing. So it's more the total page that can feel really, really good in 1v1 scenarios against champions you cannot burst, especially against tankier targets, or if you simply wanted to go a more bruiser build. 
Now you do see sudden impact and relentless as those scaling options are really nice for bonus damage and boost jumping, but you do have the option of getting booties as well as futures market if you prefer to go that secondary page as well. Ultimately, they almost have the exact same win rate at around 51%, so it really does come down to your personal preference, your personal Rengar style, as well as providing considerations for matchup and team composition factors. And so I mentioned first clears with this and you will see four first clears showing up on your screen now. Typically Scrub Noob and many other Rengars simply do the red side clear still into the top side. You can get the crab, you can look to invade, look for a gank and then fall back to the blue side. Don't forget to pre-stack your ferocity on that red buff. You can pre-stack it on the blue buff as well as I showed earlier in the video. You can also use a ward hub or as your bot lane walks by to jump to the crux for added time efficiency. But really with the jungle experience buffs coming next patch, I don't want to dedicate too much time to first clears other than he has nothing that's kind of eccentric or weird. And I will link my jungle roots video for season 10 in the description below so you can watch that in the meantime. And I will update it if anything changes with the jungle experience buffs coming next week. So the last thing we need to talk about before we get into the gameplay where we can look at ganking, player styles, team fighting, and so on, is itemization. Now it goes without saying you want to take Hunter's machete, but a lifesteal auto attacks, that's his thing. After that, to increase your clear speed to what feels like infinity compared to what it is at level 3, you get that tier mat. It also adds a spicy aspect to your one shot combo, but that isn't really your core item, you kind of leave that usually to round out the end of your build. The first complete item that you get is the Duskblade of Drakthar. I don't know why I felt like saying it like that, I just did. This has always been his core item for quite a while now. Needless to say, we've lost the vision passive of detecting wards, but you do have that nice slow, even if it's only for a short duration, 99% on that auto attack once you leave stealth, and from there you can unleash the might of your full combo. The fact that it gives you the same AD and cooldown as the jungle warrior item means it's better to go this because of the added synergy with his kit. Now secondary, a lot of people classically go Yumus. You want the movement speed, you want to feel like you're running faster, but the utility of Banshees is just too good to pass up at the moment. The new shield that works like Banshees Veil just means that once you do go into teams for full one shots, you can actually have time to, you know, kill someone before Janna ults you all the way back out. Oh man, Janna's and Lulu's as Rengar mains? Not good, not good. Horrible champions. And the only time we like Yumi is when she's on our back. And obviously once your boots are upgraded, Ionian boots, you get a last whisper item, and then you can sell your machete and get a GA or black cleaver, and also sell your boots to get a Yumus, and then finish off the ravenous Hydra. That's the full accessible lethality build, and honestly you're gonna one shot pretty much any squishy in the game. You have such a low cooldown on your ultimate, which feels really really good, including with the ability rotations. But the interesting variation we're currently seeing in this meta, Scrub Noob himself does this a lot, is for your final item, you actually don't go GA Black Cleaver or Yumus. You sell your boots, you sell your machete, you get Phantom Dancer and then Infinity Edge. That Phantom Dancer passive is really, really nice. You get to move through units, it gives you a shield once you go below 30% HP, it gives you base movement speed as well, and the crit synergizes nicely with Infinity Edge. Absolute despicable damage, and you can use this build on Conqueror or Electrocute, it doesn't really change. The runes from your jungle simply synergize with your playstyle better or the matchups better, but the builds kind of stick to the same. However, I will acknowledge there are Bruiser builds specifically in Korea that are used, where they go Conqueror, then they look at the Tiamat, the Dustblade, Black Cleaver, some tankier items, maybe a Sterex, a Titanic Hydra, so you have those options on your screen now, just as an added variation. However, the one shot build with PD and Infinity Edge, or the full Lethality build, are still your best bets to hard carry in solo queue, specifically if you're looking to climb by yourself. So now we can jump into our good gameplay breakdown of Scrub Noob to show you exactly how to 1v9. Now obviously in last year's video we looked very heavily at in fact doing delayed invades and such things, however in a normal safer world you can simply get to stacks of ferocity on the plant behind the red buff, take that red buff, hop over to the Krugs if you like or walk around, use your smite on the big Krug and then go to the Raptors. So while he does that note what the Lee Sin is actually doing. He does the red buff and immediately circumnavigates the vision planted by the blue team and goes directly to his blue, into his grump, into his wolves. This is a really good defensive clear if you know the enemy jungler is going to look to invade you. Rango with Conqueror can beat most champions 1v1, especially at level 3, and so he's simply looking to protect his house, which is a good practice. If I'm against a shark and I'm on, I will do the same clear. It lets you get the buffs, fall back, and kind of wastes the time of the enemy jungler as they didn't really expect you to be doing that. And because he didn't see the Lee cross the raptor path, he knows he might have gone directly there and that was the reason for the invade. This isn't so bad because Rengar can get kind of low if you don't clear very efficiently, so he simply returns to base, grabs himself a longsword and a control ward, and heads to his blue. His scouting lets him know that the Lee Sin will highly likely be on the top side and looking to take that crab. Now as Rengar, it is important that you track the enemy jungler well, you do not want to be counter jungled and you do want to be able to make the first play that starts stacking your bone tooth, giving you some item leads, if you have futures market, even better. And this is all because of the value of Tiamat in fast clearing as well as your ability to do dragons early. 
Now, in this case, his early invite gave him tracking information on the Lee Sin. From here, you can clear your whole blue side and then move on down to the crab. Yes, this is high elo, so you will have people rotating and helping you. If you don't, the enemy probably doesn't either. Just keep an eye out for it. But you definitely are the alpha kitty and take out the enemy jungler in that 1v1 sense. If you do have to back away and your team makes a play, which, you know, it's rare, but it can happen. Make sure you use that flash burst jump. Commit fully to the cause. Once in and around those brushes, it's very easy for you to get the reset jumps and then take someone out. The scaling of you getting one kill is significantly better than the least in getting that one assist and whoever else getting a kill on the enemy team. Now obviously this isn't exactly a fight worth paying attention to. All that you need to know is that the enemy team chases the blue team towards the red buff in the Rengar's jungle and because he just got another buy, he doesn't quite have the team at which does suck. He can still use good Rengar mechanics, gets two stacks onto his Veracity bar, uses the W and the E for another and hits a really nice empowered Ebola across the wall that blind kills the Diana. So that's a second kill. That's another stack on the Bone Tooth. Yes, you have to give up the dragon because your bottom lane is apparently typical of all bottom lanes. But the Bone Tooth stacking and the little bit of a lead you have now in the Lee Sin means that you definitely win in the 1v1 sense. As Rengar, it is common you get a kill here and there in the early game, but how do you translate this level 4, level 5, 2 kill lead into basically an infinite snowball cat of death? Now it's worth noting here, once you've done your red side, you go back, you finally get your tier mat, another long sword, you can take the red buff. With the jungle experience buffs coming next week, you most likely will reach level 6 at this stage. So you can use that ultimate to perhaps collapse in the Lee Sin yourself, Make sure you pick up the nice one-shot kill and the crab. However, in the case you are level 5 and your team does rotate, I want you to focus on the in and out bush jumping used as well as the variation of W to get the heal back, not always necessarily using empowered Q just by default. You need to be able to adapt to the situation and punish the Lee Sin for being greedy on that crab to pick up more kills. Now, yeah, that's nice as team came, it's pretty simple. That maybe doesn't happen for you, the enemy jungler maybe doesn't give you a freebie and so you don't get those free stacks. However, no matter what happens, if the enemy jungler is off the map or topside or wherever he is, go and take his camps. You have the lead, invade, alpha cat, you can kill him if he comes, otherwise deny him as much as possible. There still is no catch-up experience. But most importantly, there's absolutely nothing better than feasting on bottom laners returning to lane, and you can do this from the red side of the map or the blue side of the map, but look at the power of Conqueror here. I don't think he's missing the burst of Electrocute. The ultimate, the chase down, the full stack of abilities, that's two free kills simply by being in the right place, reading the enemy, and knowing how far ahead you actually are. Too many Rengars in this situation play scared. They take the blue and they leave and go back to the jungle. Maybe they take the dragon. You know, they don't think about going further with the kills, pushing the limits of how much damage you can do. There's a reason this champion is banned so much on high elo, and a reason why ADCs hate him, even if he isn't exactly in a good state. Now the next part of this is what is the following objective you want to get and where is the lane that you can best abuse to get even more fed than you already are. In this case, definitely the dragon will be up in a few minutes and you can abuse bottom lane given how stifled they are at this point anyway. So go back to base, get some nice items, grump, all the way to the crux clear. For next patch, between 4 and 18 minutes, we will have slightly more experience, so doing these full clears in between your activities is definitely going to reward you very nicely as Rengar. And then use the classical lane gank. Rengar loves lane ganks so much. In and around the bushes, scan as you approach, use the minion waves as a good cover-up, and as you can see, if you don't have enough movement speed, the runoff on your jump won't let you get quite as far as you think you can. But it doesn't matter, you're pushing the limits. And the fact that they know he's there now doesn't really matter whatsoever. Press R, chase her down, look at the animation, full one shot, level 5 Lulu, kill her as many times as you can before that obnoxious ultimate comes into play. And now you can fall back to the Tasty Dragon, having gotten all plates, a first tower, many many kills and now good crucial objective control and after that dragon when they say cats are an invasive species and they are just apex predators you know behave like one take the wolves on the way out why should he have anything he's playing lee sin of all things meta abuser but the following clips and gameplay as we close out this video i want to highlight are the things that most ringo players really fail at because it's very common to get leads like this if you play a strong early game but many rangos will have seven eight kills a game but then you look at their kdas and they have nine or ten deaths they don't really accentuate this lead and know how to take control of the game by the throat or the eyeball so when you see that adc split pushing on the bottom side immediately rotate press r it doesn't matter if he sees you you have the movement speed one shot him Go back into their jungle. You live there now, it's your jungle. Take their camps, they're free, they're tasty, they're grumpy. And when they collapse on you, this is where your Rengar 1v1 mechanics and 2v1 mechanics need to come out and shine. Good vision around bushes lets you do things to that Lulu, which are kind of unnatural. 
And then you've got Lee Sin rotating and he thinks he can take you, but apparently he truly is blind and you flash bush jump and take him out as well. The movement speed gained from your power abilities, using that to manipulate fights as best you can while the full stank of Conqueror keeps going and refreshing, means that the synergy with his kit in the situation and the full damage lethality build is really, really strong, especially when you have this many kills. And so in essence, I want you to keep the following in mind when you want to close these kinds of games out. If you have good pathing, good invades, good tracking, good ganks, and you end up in this situation, make sure you are consistently now hunting. Scrub Noob probably has the best IGN for Rengar mains, and that is fear. And that's exactly what the enemy team should feel when they're against a Rengar that's this fed. That gives you free heralds and free dragons. Use the pressure to take them. Close the game out with objective focus. If your team is fighting and people are getting low, rotate. Take the split push. Kill the one-shot targets. Never give up the pressure. Use your ultimate to scout. Use your ultimate to zone. Use your ultimate as an engager, as a tower diver. It has a lot of utility outside of simply just one-shotting someone, although that is the best part about it. And you just saw that here in this example, the triple Q burst combo. Free stacking your ferocity and using that empowered Q as you run up with your ultimate. As long as you activate that empowered Q before you run out of combat, you will pretty much be able to one-shot almost any single target. Fully stacking Conqueror to 10 and being able to annihilate all ancestors. Don't do the typical low elo thing where you simply run into 5 people and die over and over again and throw your lead in the game. There's a difference between Alpha, Beta and a Meathead. Don't be a Meathead because you're just gonna int. Don't be a Beta Jungler because you're just gonna end up behind and that's really what you don't want as a Rengar. And I do have some videos on how to close as an Assassin and teamfight as an Assassin that isn't unique to Rengar. So I will link those in the description if you're looking for more specific micro mechanics around closing in teamfights. But otherwise I hope the set of Runes, kits, combos, ganking, and first clears, as well as a gameplay example can show you the mentality and the skills required in order to 1v9 with Rengar in Season 10. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you were able to enjoy and learn something. Please do like, share, and comment if you did. It does make me feel like an alpha kitty myself, and I do enjoy that. Don't forget to subscribe for all Season 10 jungle videos coming very soon. And as always, I will see you all in the next tutorial.